just yesterday and Nvidia announced the brand new RTX 3000 series of graphic cards and to showcase how powerful they are they launched a brand new Cyberpunk 2077 trailer that by the way it is a technology landmark for video games the graphic quality is so impressive that Nvidia had to show this game in order to sell more graphics cards uh, so on this video what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go frame by frame and like squishing every possible single piece of information we could find on this trailer so no more overdo and let's get into it we begin this trailer with a night shot of the Watson district something to notice that is that we have some roadblocks on the highway if we zoom in this a lot we can see those roadblocks and this is funny because uh, this exact features were described by the lore book the word of cyberpunk 2077 and also people who play the game so the idea is that those roadblocks are to isolate the Watson district from the rest of the city uh, we also can see this holographic ad and it's the same that we can see on the gig trailer that is very close to the Lizzie's bar so that is roughly the location for that following we have a night shot of little china on watson district and this shot is stunning this shows us how much the game improved on the last uh, two three years if we compare this to the 2018 gameplay demo the one with uh, 48 minutes of gameplay released on d3 the, the difference are so mind-blowing it's they've been polishing this game so much that is unbelievable so all right on this shot we can see mesala studios which is probably a brain dance recording uh, place i guess we can also see many many restaurant signs we can see Kabayan foods caliente 24 hours uh karaoke x24 as well and there's also this vending machine for extra extra large burritos we probably will be able to use those machines to buy food that it's very likely to give us temporary boosts maybe heal uh, small amounts of health or something uh, there's also on the right side the uh, uh, night city police department station right on the top we have brainwash and we have brain gas on those monorails uh, so yeah probably some brain dance bars i'm assuming nearby moving on we have another shot from inside the valentino's bar uh, on this shot there's not much to say between uh, the aesthetics that is really amazing those cold plated uh, prosthetics on that girl has those super weird and at the same time cute uh, cup table protectors with a, a brass knuckle hitting a pink skull i'm probably gonna order some of those for myself moving on we have a shot outside the afterlife club we've seen a similar shot on the night city wire trailer where jackie is waiting for us to arrive we have some people outside there this guy that is smoking we have this girl on high heels and she's wearing a super bright neon earring uh, i love this style and the details are so mind-blowing again <laughs> moving on we have a shot from inside Lizzie's bar this time is a little bit more crowded than what we saw on the Night City Wire trailer things to note here is that a lot of people dancing we also have some a couple chatting here on the corner for the next shot we have afterlife again uh, this place was also showcased in a lot of uh, screenshots from Nvidia and one thing to Pay attention here that I never saw before is on the on the floor is written caution wear protective uh, equipment and if you look at the style of the place I just now noticed when I was analyzing this trailer is that it, it has some strong industrial vibes here we have another shot inside afterlife this is the bar where we drink with Jackie and actually I just noticed that he is sitting there on the last chair waiting for us and one thing that you 100% notice on afterlife is most of the people especially the girls who work here are all chromed or golden or i don't know metallic so this is most likely a full body skin replacement that is sort of not that rare to see in cyberpunk 2077 universe but that's definitely expensive so she looks like she's carrying dual pistols uh but i'm not sure 
Maybe this is a sort of a gang. It looks like Valentinus, but at the same time is not. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. So one thing that is really, really interesting is here is that uh, she's with her bare foot on the floor. I mean, not her foot because it's a prosthetic, but she's not wearing any shoes. It sort of makes sense because why you need shoes if you have a prosthetic leg? Uh, either way, that's just some nice touch, I guess. Moving on, we have uh, another shot from, uh, from a scene where it's saw on the life path trailer so this is padre and his bodyguard so what they wanted to show us in, on this frame is the ray trace reflections on the water here so one thing i noticed when i was doing this uh, video analysis is that this 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 car this vehicle is actually the exact same model that we saw on not only on the life path game trailer of course because the same scene but also on the tools of destruction trailer where they showcase many many weapons and this trunk is loaded with weapons so i wonder if this is the same scene i guess it is so maybe we'll transport some weapons for this guy i don't know Next shot is the same uh, we saw already many, many times. That uh, is the Corporal Life Path V landing on Lizzie's bar. Uh, the following shot is sort of something that we already saw in the 2018 demo. Uh, so this is the Maelstrom hideout. And we are firing a shotgun from Rostovic. The shotgun was modded for tech, so it has piercing rounds. And here we finally can see them truly in action. So just notice how the shotgun pellets, they pierce the cover, they completely shred the first enemy, they either hit something explosive behind the enemy or maybe they are explosive shells, I'm not sure, but there's some, this, there's some big explosion and the second enemy is just thrown away dead and the animation of him falling on the ground is so well done. It's the physics feels so natural, amazing. Moving on, we have more combat. So here we are firing the Genesis 1924. We already see this uh, assault rifle in action with uh, both power and smart versions. But here we're using a power version of the weapon. Uh, we can see the destructible environment there, this uh, concrete piece shattering. And I wonder if we will have friendly fire because this guy who's firing is really terrible. I wonder how he didn't murder Jackie over there. Uh, so yeah, maybe you could enable or disable friendly fire. Probably, it's probably a setting. On the follow-up shot, we have a another view of what is probably Kabuki on the Watson district and those guys look like they are Tiger Claws members. This go also have a lot of tattoos that looks like tigers so probably a fight against the tigers here. For the next shot is uh, yet another uh, scene that we are fighting Maelstroms. This time we're fighting a boss that is um, Royce and one thing that caught my attention is this really red hot glow from the weapon so weapon overheating will be a issue for this light machine gun at least not sure if or for all light machine guns but this one will probably have to either replace the barrels from time to time or maybe just stop firing altogether the next shot is the entrance of lazy bars and the only reason why this is here is to sell rtx cards so another fancy reflections on water Another shot from inside Afterlife, we can see it's not the same girl, but it's a similar looking, all uh, cybernetic enhanced, with a really short shorts, jean shorts, and more reflections. The next shot is what it looks like to be an exit ramp for a parking lot or something, and it's packed with ads. Most of them we could see on the lore book, the World of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book. Right on the left we have a traveling system that uh, tells you that you can go to Chicago in under three hours. We have uh, some energy, drinks, all foods. Mr. Stud on the back. Not sure what this red one on is, but it's probably some fashion. This one, if I'm not mistaken, is for some perfume or maybe some uh, fashion cybernetics. And this one I never saw actually is El Guapo Need for Steed. And there's a cybernetic horse. So I wonder if this it's gonna be a mini game where we can ride enhanced horses or maybe bat on them. So maybe a roach Easter egg 
from The Witcher 3. Leave any comments where you think El Guapo is gonna be. I'm really curious about this. Um, another shot to show reflections, global ray trace, illumination, and shadows, and all that sort of good stuff. That's probably on either Pacifica or Badlands, but my bad is this is on Pacifica. By the way, if you want to know more about the districts of Cyberpunk 2077, I have a whole playlist that explains one by one. The link for it is on the video description. Make sure to check that out after you watch this video. The next shot is another image from inside the Valentino's bar. Now we finally know the name of this place. It's El Coyote Coho or Cojo. I think it's Coho. Uh, this guy is probably the owner slash bartender. We already saw him in a couple of other images and trailers. Uh, he's clearly Valentino's tattoo all over the place, the cross, the golden cross. We have this crow leaning on the bar here that is playing some butt chicks. Classic cyberpunk, I guess. There's also this really big bull horn and skull on the top that is way bigger than a normal bull would be, I guess. Maybe this is an enhanced animal from the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, the lore books say that they, they were experimenting on animals, Biotechnica were experimenting on animal, animals and things didn't go right. So maybe there will be some huge, huge animals in this universe. I don't know. Moving on, we have another shot from the exoteric shack of Jackie's girlfriend that I believe it's named Misty, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, we we have a good look at the menu for the place. So for only 14.99 euro dollars, you can spend one hour receiving chakra harmonization if you want, if that's your thing. There are crystal radiation for 10, 10 eddies and 99 cents. That is glitch free, so you don't need to worry about glitches. Uh, I, I don't know if we could use those services but from the description of them, it looks like it's a brain day slash therapy slash with drugs or some crazy combination. I don't know. I, I'm a man of science. I'm not going to lie. I don't believe in, in those kind of stuff. Uh, but that definitely sounds fun. So I, I'm 100% trying this. Following up, we see a different angle from the afterlife bar. i never seen this bar from this angle, but it, this is clearly the afterlife place. And now I started to understand why this place looks so industrial. If you pay attention to the right side of the screen, uh, this is actually a morgue like a, a decommission morgue that makes a lot of sense why this, this place is named afterlife uh, there's this thing here in order for you to get a drink named after you you need to be really badass and very very dead so this this place have a lot of uh, connections to death uh, I like and never noticed this before and it was quite surprising when I saw those uh, fridges let's say I wonder where they store the booze on the left side we can also see some screens that show a probably a Kiroshi optic augmentation or something and the other place we ever saw those screens before was on Victor uh, place the Reaper dock from uh, Watson the one we we go visit for the first time on the game when we when we're running the, the prologue so yeah, maybe Afterlife have a different Reaper dock. They're very common on Night City, so you can expect to see them all over the place. The next shot, we, we sort of had a glimpse of this on the, the Night City Wire, the last episode, on the Life Path trailer. That is either another part of Lizzie's bar, but my bad is that this is one of the many brothels for the Moxies in Watson. They own a lot of business and we're probably going to be able to visit a handful of them. On the next shot, we have a roadboat that it's according to this map that, by the way, you need to go check this map. So this is still a work in progress. Uh, it's my friend Divianaut that is making this all those maps from, uh, from scratch, sort of. He's redrawing them based on the information that you can find on the covers from the lore book, the World of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book. So he pretty much scanned the cover pages and he threw on top of everything. Uh, so that's a lot of hard work. 
make sure to check that out. It's 100% accurate. We can see that this place is right near the Northside District. So this is Kabuki. On the next shot, this was like mind blowing because we never seen anything like this ever before in any promotional material. So this is sort of huge. We saw these robots for the first time. They do look like a ripoff from the uh, Apex Legend Pathfinder, but whatever, I like them. And this is both interesting and I don't know, weird because by 2077, I would not expect to see those bulky, classic, old ass robots around, just like Chappie or something. I would expect something more futuristic. But again, the Fort Corporate War like destroyed most of the world infrastructure and that probably set back technology for a long time. And by the way, there's also a playlist for all of this information that is also linked in the video description. So if you know, if you want to know more about the Cyberpunk 2077 timeline, everything that happened between, I don't know, 1990 until 2077 on this universe, make sure to check out that video as well. So those robots are made by the one of the highest end ever weapon manufacturers. It's Kung Tao. They're really, really good at making smart weapons. So all those super badass smart shotguns are from this company and they do look like they are working for an uh, new and they do look like they're working for Night City Police Department even though they don't have any identification tag from the from the NCPD whatsoever. On one of the last shots here we have a frontal view of V driving the Quadra Turbo. Never seen the car from this angle before, so it gives us some perspective of how the vehicle will look like in the game. Uh, notice how this this express lane is very very wide, so triple lane uh, for both sides, and it's like underground sort of. So I think this thing above us is another uh, like a highway, another level of the street. At least it looks like it is. And on this shot, we just have NCPD finest murdering some innocent guy. Or maybe he's not innocent. I just assume because he was like on this vending. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, maybe he was selling some chicken or something. Because, you know, animals are uh, against the law in the cyberpunk universe. You cannot sell chicken, for example. You all have to sell uh, synthetic food. So maybe he was selling some illegal goods and deserve to be murdered by the government. And on the final shot, we have this van crashing on this wall on what looks like to be Watson, not sure though. But this is also another uh, testimony of how the graphics improve over the time. I know this shot is night and there's a lot of things going on here, like real traced, like ray trace reflections on the vehicles and the floor and all. But oh my God, this looks so, Good, come on. And that concludes our frame by frame analysis breakdown for the NVIDIA ray tracing on promotional video for Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, I'm here every day bringing you, just for you, brand new, fresh, interesting Cyberpunk 2077 content. And all I ask in return is your subscription. So if you think this video was helpful and fun to watch, make sure to smash that button right there. And that'll be all. As always, thank you so much for watching and I see you next time.